please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. In an unprecedented move, 64 sitting members of parliament have signed a motion to impeach the Chief Justice of India, Deepak Mishra. The Congress, along with six other parties, moved a motion to remove the Chief Justice. This move comes a day after a bench led by Chief Justice Mishra ruled out any foul play in the death of Judge B.H. Loya, who was hearing the Sarabuddin Shah fake encounter case. BGP President Amit Shah is an accused in the case. But the Congress party has made it clear that this case has nothing to do with the decision to move the impeachment motion. In fact, late Judge Loya's matter is not listed as one of the five charges against the Chief Justice in the impeachment motion. The seven political parties say moving the motion is the only recourse to remedy the situation. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has hit back at the Congress party in a post on social media. Jaitley has said, and I quote, it is a revenge petition after the falsehood of the Congress party has been established in the Justice Loya death case. It is an attempt to intimidate a judge and send a message to other judges that if you don't agree with us, 50 MPs are enough for a revenge action, end of quote. We've got a power pack panel of legal luminaries on the show, but first up, a quick snapshot of what has been a dramatic day in the history of India's political and judicial history. We have moved a motion for impeachment for the removal of Chief Justice of India The first charge relates to the conspiracy to pay illegal gratifications. They want to put uh, pressure on the judiciary. Common people have the lost faith in judiciary, but judiciary is in crisis. We want to say Congress ये चेष्टा नहीं करना चाहिए ये हमारे देश के लिए कितना अच्छा है कितना अच्छा नहीं है इस पे लोग अवश्य विचार करेंगे So what are the specific charges leveled by these 64 MPs against the Chief Justice Ashmit Kumar is standing by with just that Ashmit detail for us the five charges Right, so an impeachment motion is under consideration. Mind you, there are only two grounds for impeaching a judge. One is incapacity, which is not in question here. Uh, the second question is proof misbehavior. Now, to manifest that point of proof misbehavior, we have five very severe charges being leveled against the Chief Justice of India under this impeachment motion. Let's quickly take our viewers through them. The first one pertains to the Prasad Education Trust case. This was a case that was heard briefly by the Chief himself. Uh, the question uh, also arose by way of a CBI investigation where they cornered individuals uh, that were seeking, and, uh, seeking bribes essentially citing proximity to the chief himself. So uh, essentially the charge being leveled here is that the facts and circumstances show a prima facie evidence suggesting that the CGI might have been involved in a conspiracy by persons associated with the Prasad Education Trust for payment of illegal gratification. So that's the first serious charge uh, being leveled. Let's take a look at the other charge, the second one, and this is a follow-up charge essentially. Uh, keep in mind that there was a plea that was filed uh, before the Apex Court that sought an independent probe regarding that very same case, regarding the very same charge of seeking of illegal gratification and the charge here essentially is the way CGI dealt with the matter on both the judicial side as well as the administrative side with respect to this petition uh, and that is what created more questions than answers that's the se second charge being pulled here as far as the Chief Justice is concerned let's look at the third charge uh, that has now been leveled the CGI appears to have antedated administrative orders again a very serious questions questions of forgery, forgery being leveled against none other than the Chief himself so that makes up the third charge as far as the fourth question that is raised uh, and this is quite serious as well uh, it, it talks about it goes back very many years when the chief was an advocate in the Odisha High Court the charge being leveled here is that the CGI acquired land when he was an advocate in Odisha High Court mind you uh, by giving an affidavit a false affidavit uh, that was found to be false that's essentially the charge being leveled uh, the second uh, part of that charge is that despite allotment and cancellation of orders in 1985 he surrendered th that land only in 2012 when he was elevated to the apex court that's the fourth charge and the fifth one, of course, is critical. It is more contemporary. It's the charge we've heard of more recently, that the CGI is arbitrarily assigning cases, politically sensitive cases, to select judges. Keep in mind that the January press conference that we had, where we had four judges of the Apex Court coming out in the open, they made a direct reference uh, to uh, this practice of uh, preferential treatment of cases, preferential treatment of, uh, of, of, of assignment of cases. In fact, very recently, Justice Chalameshwar also said that uh, the Jail Lalita DA case was a classic example of how cases were 
were being assigned to preferred benches. So clearly, uh, some very, very strong charges being leveled. Of course, the ball now rests in the court of the Rajya Sabha chairman to decide whether or not to allow uh, the impeachment motion. Ashmit, appreciate you joining us. Uh, five charges there as part of the impeachment motion moved by the 64 MPs against the Chief Justice of India. Joining me to take this conversation forward, Soli Sarabji, former Attorney General, Vishwajit Bhattacharya, former Additional Solicitor General, as well as Justice Zedu Khan, uh, former Judge of the Allahabad High Court. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here. Mr. Sarabji, let me start by asking you, sir, and I'm quoting to you what the press release put out by the seven parties say. When the judges of the Supreme Court themselves believe that the judiciary's independence is under threat and democracy is in peril, alluding to the functioning of the office of the Chief Justice of India, should the nation stand still and do nothing? You heard the five charges that are the basis for this impeachment proceedings. Do you believe that this was the action of last resort? Do you believe that there was no other recourse for these political parties or for the four judges who have raised this matter four months ago but to go public with their grievance and to now move this impeachment motion? Nay, I don't think so. Even the grievances of the four judges when they had the press conference was about allocating cases to junior judges and not to senior judges on the assumption that they should be getting the allocation of cases. That's not true misbehavior. I don't understand this. By the way, please appreciate hmm. the impeachment motion against the Chief Justice really affects the confidence of the public in the free and fair administration of justice by a higher judiciary. There are other ways of doing it. Mm. You can't break up things of year, uh, 20 years past. I'm afraid, to my mind, there seems to be the Congress wants to just have temporary political gains, not realizing the consequences so, of that move. And I must compliment, so if I'm correct, I must so compliment Manmohan Singh. I think it's wrong. Yes, Manmohan Singh is not a signatory to this. Uh, would you agree then with the finance minister? He says that this is a revenge action. He calls this uh, revenge by the Congress party because they didn't like the judgment that was delivered in the judge lawyer matter, even though the Congress says this has nothing to do with that judgment and they had actually started getting the signatures from MPs when Parliament was in session, even before the judgment was delivered. But the finance minister categorically stating that this is a revenge impeachment process. Well, that's his expression. I, I, in a way, I agree with him. But the point I'm making, Shirin, is more important. The point I'm making is confidence of the people rests in the judiciary. That should not be affected. Mm. And even if you say that what the four judges say, say is correct, that's not proved misbehavior. That means the impression that we should get the cases was the court, uh, uh, Chief Justice giving cases to us. To my mind, it seems to be an attempt to tell the judges that if you don't pass orders which we think are correct, which are to our liking, mm. we will mm. embarrass you, we will humiliate you. Because it's very clear they haven't got the numbers. They won't succeed in getting the impeachment motion. Then what's the idea? The idea is to send the message that be careful, don't pass orders which we think are bizarre or incorrect, otherwise you would have to face an impeachment motion mm. and the humiliation and embarrassment which follows that from. I, I'm very much against that. I'm very so disturbed that, that this, this should happen in our country. So when I, yeah, go you're on. saying you're disturbed that this, is, this has been done to embarrass and humiliate the Chief Justice. In fact, you're also calling this uh, a means of intimidation, which is exactly what the Finance Minister has also said. He said that these are intimidatory tactics on whether you have a case of proven misconduct or numbers on your side. This is a serious threat to judicial independence. Would you agree that this now puts the judiciary in a crisis of confidence? Well, it does in a way. It's trying to rob the judiciary, no question about it. And that's the reason I was just mentioned that Manmohan Singh and Salman Khoshi, they realize the implication of this. Don't go by the Congress just what I'm afraid, temporary political gains without realizing the serious consequences this has on mm. the institution itself and on the public's perception of the judiciary. 
That's unfortunate. It's very hmm. unfortunate. But, Ms. But Mr. Sarabji, do you see no merit at all in those five charges that have been put forward by these five by these seven political parties uh, in in the impeachment motion? Do you believe that there is no merit in those charges? Well, I'm not here to go into the merit or not the merit. My point is, even if there is something in those charges, impeachment motion is not the right remedy. There may be other cases. Bar associations are known to hold meetings criticizing a judge of the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice, the other recourses. Not the impeachment motion is a remedy of last resort. You're trying to remove a judge sure, and appoint the security of tenure. So it must be on a solid, concrete basis. Not on merely implications right. you know, Justice and insinuations no, just, and surmises. Justice Chalameshwar also suggested Justice Chalameshwar also said that impeachment is not the answer to every problem. But if I go back again to the press conference and what has been stated today, they're saying we were hoping that the anguish of the judges as reflected in their statements to the press would be addressed by the Chief Justice, and the Chief Justice in response would set his house in order. More than three months have passed, nothing has changed. So if you're saying that there were other ways of being able to address these issues or these questions and not impeachment, what could have been done? It seems like the impasse continues. Well, impeachment is not the answer. Impeachment is not the remedy for this. As I told you, by there are bar associations that are very active. They can move resolutions. Then can be other fora which can be done. Because this really gives the impression you are really trying to browbeat the judges. It's very clear to my mind. Mm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Khan, let me ask you, sir. You just heard Soli Sarabji saying that this sends out the message uh, that politicians uh, or the executive, if, if the matter were to, to be pushed forward by, by, by somebody in power, uh, that this is a tactic of intimidation. It's being done to browbeat judges. It actually interferes with the judicial process itself and judicial independence. What do you make of this, and has it now caused irreparable damage to the judiciary? In fact, there are two angles to judge this matters because one is constitutional thing, other is that are political. Constitutional matter says that the member of parliament has got power. If they are not satisfied, if they are not satisfied and they feel aggrieved, if they say that uh, some injustice has been done or something has been going wrong, then they can uh, bring the motion. And they have uh, uh, rightly moved the infection of whether it was a, a nice move or bona fide move or something like that will be uh, cleared afterwards. But only thing is that they had exercised their power, but uh, the under constitution. the constitution, yeah, sure. Under the constitution. Yeah. But other thing is that political. And is the political, why the politi political will be uh, angry with? Only thing that uh, judgment lawyers, lawyers uh, judge lawyers' case judgment is against them, is not that. They are not, uh, that the judgment is not against them, but the ju judgment is a public interest litigation. It was not a very important thing. The, it was only uh, mysterious things that has been, that has to be investigated. Mm. They say that, the Chief Justice said that no, not to be investigated, and he has given a reasoned judgment. And the other two judges are very uh, nice judges, and one of them, I know, is a very nice judge, one of the best judges in the uh, yeah. Supreme Court, uh, Dr. Chanchur, and he gave the very good judgment. So it, it cannot be said that intentionally uh, something has gone wrong. But only thing is that uh, mayor, that he's a uh, chief justice and other person are involved, uh, you can't say anything. Okay. Because this, uh, there are five charges, and uh, this charge has not been leveled against him. Vishwadhi Bhattacharya, what happens from here on now? The motion has been moved. It is up to the chair of the Rajya Sabha to take a call on whether he agrees, doesn't agree, initiates the process, or doesn't initiate the process. Up until then, uh, what happens? You see, Shireen, this is a constitutional process under Article 124, subclause 4 of the Constitution of India. Now, it is now up to the vice president to take a call whether to admit it or to re reject it. Hmm. If the vice president rejects, the matter is closed. Right. Then the impeachment fails right on the threshold. Right. Now, I can tell you one thing. The process of impeachment, as per the Judges' Inquiry Act of 1968, says proof misbehavior or incapacity then it has to be 
inquired into by a committee right now which will inquire into it with two thirds of the members of parliament present and voting each house mm. and majority of the members mm. impeachment ultimately will not take place will not take place as mr sarab ji said they don't have besides, the numbers yeah. besides it is a time consuming yeah. process the honorable the chief justice of india deepak mishra retires on 1st of october october yeah now even taking into account the worst case i mean scenario for or against the honorable mm. the chief mm. justice i don't think he is go going to be impeached but you know since these five charges have been mm. sort of leveled mm. and the entire court has entire country has seen these i mean ch charges yeah. you know the like prasad education trust right. and right. you know this uh, roster right. distribution the administrative and all. issues yes and you know in his capacity as a lawyer before you see ultimately uh, this will linger on in the minds of people mm, mm. so so i personally feel the political parties in their own wisdom have initiated this i am not going to question and as justice chalameshwar himself has stated yes impeachment is not, not a solution. solution there is yes. a larger issue here may yeah. i just yeah. one minute there is a larger issue here which people are forgetting the issue is the independence of, of the, the judiciary, judiciary yeah. independence of the supreme court yeah. the institutional integrity of the supreme court mm. so it is not chief justice versus other judges i am convinced all the judges are standing solid united as an institution mm. the issue is larger so the issue is between the executive and the judiciary That's right. that is what you're talking about so lisa rab ji let me ask you sir uh, do you believe that this is not about the chief justice of india versus his brother judges this is really a matter of the executive trying to exert influence and interfere in the workings of the judiciary this is actually a battle between the executive and the judiciary that's playing out today yes is in a way that's correct that is so but the whole question is in any case you have attacked the chief justice by this method and what do you expect him to do when he sits at home but the impeachment motion is pending of course the vice president says no that's mm. the end of the matter mm. but then what happens then very decide other cases or not decide other cases he sits at home you see the whole thing this yeah. has done a, it has affected the confidence of the people in the independence of the judiciary that sort of find very disturbing hmm. after all they know that are going to get the, so the numbers are not on the side then why what's the purpose yeah purpose is to embarrass to humiliate that i don't agree with at all Uh, Mr. Sarab ji, just to understand, sir, because as you pointed out, you know, what does he do? Does he sit at home? I mean, what what is the process going to be? Because we don't know when the ruling will come in from the chairman of the Rajya Sabha on whether uh, this is rejected or accepted. But up until then, uh, you know, is is it going to be business as usual as far as the Chief Justice is concerned? When the bar associations will move resolutions, it will feel like it. there are very independent bar association in the country and they have in the past done that they have moved resolutions criticizing the conduct of a supreme court judge or even the chief justice but this method is not the one which is the correct method i think it will do more harm than good mm. and it will only for temporary political gains i'm afraid the congress party some members of the congress party have done it without realizing the ultimate implications of the move and as i again say i congratulate mm. rather i appreciate the stand taken by man mohan singh and saman khurshid belonging to the congress party mm. but they realize the implications of this move and they're not a party to this impeachment motion one of the most disappointing days that you've seen mr khan in your career yeah in fact uh, this is one of the most important and uh, most disappointing day because i never expected that a uh, person like chief justice be hooted like that and uh, the principle fundamental principle of justice is that it should be done in that manner that it should uh, uh, it should not be done only but it should seems to have done mm. that there are some uh, something that is uh, that was cooking outside and there was something some uh, something boiling inside and that's why uh, the matter We've cropped up we have cropped up and uh, the matter reached to this extent 
and they they are certain uh, faults on the part of uh, other persons also and the few judges also because the dispute arose between the uh, family of the judges the judges themselves Mm. Uh, initiated the matter. This, initiated yeah. the matter. Yeah. They have themselves resolved the matter, and that's why when they did not resolve the matter, then when it came outside, and so that the, the politicisation has happened has happened because up. because there was a uh, uh, because things didn't work out within the judiciary itself. I'll end by asking you, Mr. Bhattacharya, one of the most disappointing days that you've seen. Uh, yes, it is somewhat disappointing, but it had to happen. The manner in which the the government is attempting to treat the union judiciary. Mm. I think... Uh, so you hold the government responsible for the, the past that we're at today? You see, the appointment of judges have been stalled. Mm. Nothing is being done. Calcutta High Court is functioning at, you know, 40% of the ca capacity. This entire judicial structure is being ruined, and mm. who is responsible for this? Mm. So this had to happen. I'm sad about it. I'm sad in the sense that this political process, this constitutional process, which has been triggered and initiated, this could have been avoided. Mm. But once it has been started, now all eyes on the Honorable the Vice President of India, I only would implore upon the, all the constitutional authorities to expedite whatever they wish to do in a transparent manner. In a transparent manner. Uh, well, gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. But before we go, one of the uh, senior most legal minds in India, Ram Jaitmalani, has thrown his weight behind Chief Justice Mishra. Speaking with us, uh, he said he does not believe the charges that have been made against the Chief Justice and has also called the impeachment motion a propaganda by those who have ignorance of the law. I don't believe any one of the allegations that are being made and they are talking of five attempts against them, there is not even one. Why do you say that, that there is not even one? One means why I say is, now first of all, let me tell you that the persons who have initiated all this mischievous propaganda against the poor Chief Justice are persons who do not know the law at all. And I, 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 I'm very serious about this assertion of mine. Hmm. They, they don't know the law, or they know the law and sort of they've completely ignored it. You think Kapil Sibal would deliberately present a case which is not strong but in law? He also happens to be that, a lawyer, that, sir. That, that seems to be the real state of affairs. I mean, I can't understand any responsible lawyer doing a thing like this. Hmm. And I'm surprised that this has happened. And I am already getting signals that their, their unity is breaking. Yeah, that within, within the Congress, there are two clear-cut views. It appears that the likes of uh, Mr. Chidambaram, who himself is a lawyer, he doesn't want to be a part of this petition. And Kapil Sibal is of the view that those people who have cases against them or those who may end up facing embarrassment at the hands of the Supreme Court are not a part of this. Does this defeat this entire process of moving an impeachment not motion at all, itself. but first of all, they do not even know the provisions of the constitution which apply to the removal of a person like this. But sir, look at, look at, look at where uh, this case really stands. The truth is, and this is again being repeated by Ghulam Nabi Azad and Kapil Sibbal, that four learned judges of the Supreme Court themselves came out in public domain to question the manner in which Chief Justice was conducting but, proceedings. But the four, is that not ground enough for this impeachment portion to be moved? The four justices are wholly wrong. They should never have created this kind of a public mischief and this matter should have been resolved in, in, in private uh, conferences with them or they should have called some leaders of the bar, sat with them and chalked out things. This is not the way to go to the press, make statements and as if the poor Chief Justice is some kind of a, some kind of a criminal, this is ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I know this Chief Justice. Mm. I have appeared before him. Mm. He's, I, I, have, I have much more respect for him than for many others.